Yourself. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I got it now. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much. It's truly an honor to have you on the platform. Oh my God, it's a pleasure. I, I, I uh, can't even imagine what you want to talk to me about, but I'm here and ready. Right, right. I mean, you worked um, with some iconic uh, actors and TV shows and movies. So we have we have a lot to talk about. I know you got a lot of moves to make, so I'm not going to hold you for long. But um, I just want to welcome you to the show. And for the viewers that may not recognize you, uh, let them know who you are and where you're from. So I'm Jan Turner. Uh, I'm a film and television director. I'm originally from South Africa and I've lived and worked in Hollywood for the last 12 years. Wow. Okay. Okay. Big shout out to South Africa. I've, I've been to like 20 African countries, but South Africa is definitely uh, one of my favorites. Cool. Where did you go when you went there? Uh, well, I, I got a chance to live there for a year. I stayed in Johannesburg. I stayed in Mabo Nang. Have you been to Mabo Nang? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful country. Near the um, Museum of Mankind. Say that again. You were out near the Museum of Mankind, or did you live in town in Mabo Nang Precinct? Yeah, yeah. I was in, uh, it's like an art district where all the, the artists and the painters and the poetry speakers. Let me see. Um, now, I got to ask you this. Um, now, how did you um, first start off? Did you start off writing or did you do television first or did you get into film first? So being becoming a director is, there's no like r obvious path. It seems like one of the jobs that you don't kind of have a clear route to. Um, so I think it started when I watched a movie called Missing, a Costa Gavras movie about the coup in Chile uh, and that someone who was who got uh, who disappeared in the aftermath of the coup. And um, that film really made me want to be a filmmaker. I was about 18. From the point of seeing that movie and knowing I want to be a filmmaker to being the director that I am now is quite a long road. So I studied politics and philosophy at, as an undergrad. I uh, worked on a lot of plays as an undergrad. I watched a lot of movies. Um, then I looked for a job in the film industry and I got a job as the receptionist answering the phone at a, at a company that was then very small called Working Title now very big um, and then I applied to go to film school and I ended up at NYU grad and studied there for a few years not long it was a very interesting time it was the early 90s that so was Spike Lee had graduated quite recently uh, one of my classmates Darnell Martin had worked on uh, do the right thing which had been shot the summer before it was a it was kind of an interesting time he was a big influence there um, and then, you know, we've got, you, you don't get to make films as soon as you get out of college. So I worked in cutting rooms as an apprentice editor and an assistant editor. I worked on, uh, I, during the time I was at NYU, um, Nelson Mandela was released and apartheid was ended. So after I graduated at NYU, I went back to South Africa because I'd been away for a very long time and lived there and so I worked on a couple of documentaries I worked on some current affairs um, about the truth commission there which was the investigation into the gross human rights violations that were committed by the apartheid government don't know if you know about that um, very heavy stuff very privileged to have been a witness to telling to, to the people telling their stories um, and then I made some television and I made some movies in South Africa. And I made a movie called White Wedding, which is, have you seen that movie, Tay? Uh, I've seen the trailer to it, but I've always heard about it because I recognize a lot of the actors, the two main actors right. from uh, White Wedding. Yeah. yeah, Kenny and Corsi and Rapulana Sepimo. Yeah. So we made that movie together and that's what brought me to the US because we we came with that movie, Kenny, Raps and myself in 
we just finished another movie called Paradise Stop. But White Wedding got selected as South Africa's entry to the um, best foreign picture category to the long list in 2011, I think. So we didn't make it to the short list, but because we're on the long list, we came here. We got a little release for the movie. We showed the movie. People interviewed us and we talked about it. And while I was here, I was thinking I want to... Uh, I love the idea of being in Los Angeles, which is where I live now, because I can really kind of work at, and as a director. You know, Kenny Raps and I, at that point, we'd made two movies that were huge in South Africa. And you've lived there, so you know that they still are. Um, I was talking to Kenny two days ago, actually. Um, and he was saying how somebody had come up to him and was saying how what a big influence those films had been and thank you. And um, so I, I decided, uh, oh yeah, so we were doing all that, but we were completely broke. You know, we were like borrowing, we were sharing petrol money to get to interviews. And then there were articles in the newspaper saying we'd made millions of brands, which we never did. Um, but, you know, movies are a tough way to make money. Um, I think people who make movies aren't really, I mean, people like us who are the filmmaker, not the producers don't, we would, if we wanted to make money, we'd be in a different business. We wanted to make the movies. So um, that brought me, White Wedding brought me here. And we went, when we went back to South Africa, I told Kenny and Raps, I think I want to give it a shot and go to work in Hollywood. And uh, I had two small kids, so we moved here, and that was about 11, 12 years ago. And since then, I have not made any features, although Kenneth and I are, are working on a, on a new feature um, that will be shot in South Africa and here in California. Um, but uh, I've worked in TV and episodic, so. Wow, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, you covered a lot. Um, I really appreciate you sharing that. Now, I can ask you, move, moving from South Africa to America, did you experience any, like, culture shock, or was it an easy transition for you? I So I'd lived in, the, in New York when I was a film student. So I'd been in the U.S. before. Um, and New York is kind of different, as you know. Uh not really, you know, because America's exported its culture so intensively mm. that you it feels familiar when you come here. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing with America is, um, you know, coming through living, growing up in apartheid, the, the child of, of activists against apartheid. I think some part of me believed that this country was better and different. And I think living here in living here the last 10 years, I think what I've come to understand is it, it's the same country. It's the same politics. It's the same issue. It's the apartheid wasn't legislated. It's called Jim Crow. Um, and, and when George Floyd died, I remember my friend David and I, Jamie and I walked, we went out and marched the very first day when all the marches happened. And it was very somber. And I remember we just looked at each other like, this is what we did when we were growing up. Why are we still marching? Like, and we, we left to come here and we're marching and it's the same. And I think that was really kind of, that hit me hard. Um, you know, my kids are, are black as well. So I have a, a brown skinned son who's just learning to drive. It scares the hell out of me. So, so the culture is kind of the same. I think that's the shock. Yeah, you're right about that. I think a lot of people would be surprised if they if they visit South Africa and the apartheid museum and they learned about Nelson Mandela and vice versa. They would see a lot of similarities. And like yeah. you say, some of the stuff is definitely still going on today. Oh yeah, here and there. Yeah. What did you feel when you went there? When what years were you there? Well, I've been to South Africa maybe like five or six times, but I okay. stayed there during 2020 during the lockdown. So I was there from oh, like January wow. to October. Yeah. Oh man, that must have been crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, it was crazy, but like, I, I really enjoy South Africa. You know, I have to be oh, honest with you. Beautiful culture. Johannesburg is a great city. It's a great, great city. Yeah. Mm. Did you spend much time in Hillbrow? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, a friend of mine, he was doing a music video in uh, Hillborough, and we was out there recording. Yeah, definitely. So that's where Kenny and I are, want to shoot the next film. Wow, wow. Yeah. I look forward to that, definitely. Yeah, we, were, we were scouting there earlier this year. It was very, in, uh, just an incredible vibe there. 